I invite you to take a seat as I want to share with you the forgotten story of the Thousand Eyes known as General Hassam. Perhaps some of you have heard his name in legends of times past as the half-man who brought peace. However, few have had the opportunity to know the true journey that led a humble individual to achieve divine greatness. More than 1200 years ago, at a time marked by the Mech Rebellion and in the midst of a bloody war, the Union ships moved in convoy using an ancient quantum leap system. On one of those voyages, a hospital ship piloted by Commander Randy Random suffered a catastrophic mishap during one of its risky jumps in the outer reaches. The tragedy took many of its crew with it, but a few emergency capsules managed to escape before the fateful outcome. Among them, there was a peculiar one, which carried a naked little man, devoid of everything except an unbreakable will. It landed him on a remote planet lost in the Outer Rim, a world mired in lawlessness and war where every day was a fight for survival. Sam was far from everything he had ever known. What should have been a minor surgery, an hour under anesthesia, had turned into an unexpected adventure. Around him, nature stretched out in the form of trees and hills that stretched into the horizon. But among the exuberant vegetation, he spotted a structure that caught his attention. Without hesitation, Sam got down to business and began building a small shelter. With wood from felled trees, he filled the holes in that old structure, transforming it into a modest makeshift cabin. Although it wasn't perfect, it would be enough to keep him dry and sleep with some protection. That man was not just any man. His past was marked by the harshness of medieval slavery, where forced labor and whipping were his daily bread. However, his life took an unexpected turn when the rebellion broke out and Sam found the chance to fight for his freedom, bravely joining the army against the mechanoids. Luck smiled on him when he landed a position as a small guns mechanic, thus sparing him the terrible trenches and hand-to-hand -hand battles. But none of that had prepared him for the loneliness and hardships he encountered on this unknown planet. His survival skills, learned as a child, were his best ally in those early days, but there was one aspect in which he faltered, cooking. He did not know how to cook, he had never needed it. His diet had always been austere, whatever he could find, and army rations were his daily sustenance. Now, in this new world, he had to fend for himself, and that meant gathering berries and fruit so he wouldn't starve. Thus, like someone who has faced harsh trials throughout his life, Sam embarked on the search for food in that new world. During the night, under the makeshift roof of his cabin, he reflected on his past and meditated on the destiny that had brought him there. At dawn the next day, determined to meet any challenge that came his way, he forged a crude but effective wooden bow. He knew that this instrument could mean the difference between life and death in this wild environment. Bow in hand, he set out to grow some wild potatoes near his shelter. However, nature had a surprise in store for him. A wild wolf emerged from the undergrowth, charging at a goat that was grazing peacefully near her cabin. Although Sam was in danger, he remained calm and continued with his task as if nothing had happened. The wolf, although victorious in his hunt, was injured during the confrontation. Sam observed the situation and with great skill shot a well-aimed arrow that hit the wolf, leaving it momentarily stunned. Taking advantage of the moment, he approached the animal and finished it off to obtain the two valuable prey. Life in that world was hard, but Sam didn't let that get him down. He worked tirelessly to plant the potatoes in the ground fertile, and the next day he dedicated himself to the mining of mechanisms and steel. His mining was horrendous, but he knew his hard work would pay off later. His thoughts were mixed with the aroma of the berries that served as his sustenance while he worked. With the collected resources, Sam got to work and built a wooden bed and a small infrastructure that would solve his problem with the kitchen. A wood generator provided the necessary energy to maintain a refrigerator and a nutrient paste extractor. Now, he would no longer have to worry about food shortages, which allowed him to focus on other tasks vital to his survival. The small shelter that he had improvised little by little was transformed into a more comfortable and functional home. 
despite the loneliness that surrounded him, Sam found satisfaction in every accomplishment he achieved. Every day was a new opportunity to learn, adapt, and face the challenges that the planet presented to him. The first harvest marked a turning point in Sam's life on that remote world. While he was busy collecting the fruits of his labor, a mysterious figure was prowling around. It was a person named Lek, who apparently lived in harmony with the animals in the area. Sam wondered if his destiny was the same, to wander naked through that inhospitable place until the end of his days. Lek seemed fearfully curious about Sam's sudden movements. That same night, as if Lek's presence had attracted fortune, a caravan of merchants arrived at the place, surprised to find two naked people in that lost corner. Sam, waking up, struck up a conversation with them and discovered valuable information about the nearby colonies and the different factions that inhabited the planet. It was then that Sam was lucky enough to meet Pandora, a refugee who had awakened from the cryo-sleep and found herself alone, requesting asylum to recover for a few days. Without hesitating, Sam agreed to offer her shelter, knowing that his company would be of great help in the mining tasks that cost him so much. And so, Pandora and Sam shared a room and experiences as if they had known each other their entire lives. While Pandora was busy collecting steel for construction, Sam found invaluable support in his new partner. Taking advantage of the little electricity generated by the generator, he dedicated himself to making a tailor's table. Thanks to her, he was able to make pants and a hat that would protect him during extremely hot days. The appearance of a crashed mechanoid ship had aroused a mixture of fear and curiosity in Sam and Pandora. As they got closer, they noticed the strange markings that suggested it had been used by humanoids at some point. Intrigued, they decided to move away from the place, afraid of what they might find. The next day, a crazed hare attacked the camp, wounding Pandora in the torso and left arm. Although the injuries weren't serious, the situation caused Sam concern. As she treated the guests' wounds with medicinal herbs, she couldn't help but think about what might be inside the mechanoid ship's damaged hull. Once Pandora recovered, they both decided to investigate the wrecked ship in hopes of finding answers. With persistent blows, they managed to breach the hull, but the surprise was greater than they expected. Sparks flew from the opening, and in an instant, the ship burst into flames. Luckily for all of us, the sudden rain put out the fire and prevented the ship's contents from being lost. Amid the rubble and ash, Sam discovered a mechanoid transponder. It was a valuable find, since in those days, much information about who controlled the mechanoids had been lost during the rebellion. The masters of these machines had fallen at the start of the war, and the truth was hidden behind the veil of the past. Filled with hope, Sam brought the transponder to the research table and, after analyzing it, confirmed his suspicions. The crashed ship in orbit belonged to a mechaniter, surely deceased but he could still respond to that transponder and call her to land nearby. Excitement washed over Sam as he realized he had found an unexpected treasure. Along with the information about the ship in orbit, he also found some coordinates that indicated a position where there was a ship in deep hibernation. The prospect of a spaceship ready to be awakened and used filled him with hope. This opportunity could be his salvation, a door to escape from that unknown planet and return to his old life. With hope intact, Sam pressed the transponder, setting off a series of events that would change his fate forever. A ship crashed south of the base, just as a group of vendors was passing through the area. From inside the ship emerged a Reaper-class mecha, a robot with sharp blades for arms, which, if not for the timely intervention of the merchants, could have ended the lives of Sam and Pandora. The Reaper was eliminated by the caravan of merchants who protected their lives. Sam was amazed at the chain of coincidences that had allowed all of this to happen. Barely greeting the merchants, as his mind was focused on the crashed ship he ran to where the ancient body of the Mechanator lay. Carefully, he removed the ancient Mecha control chip from the ancient skull and carried it back to the storage room. Without hesitating, Sam decided to implant the chip. However, after doing so, he did not experience any apparent change. He thought that perhaps the chip was damaged or inoperative and continued with his tasks, making himself a t-shirt while Pandora was away from the base, mining to the south. It was then that an unexpected capsule landed on the roof of the warehouse, breaking it. From it emerged a small construction mecha. Despite the noise, Sam didn't seem to notice anything, as if everything was happening in another reality. He continued his task, but vivid dreamlike images flashed through his mind, 
he decided to meditate to understand what was happening. In that state of serenity, he saw himself on his back, meditating. When he turned, he was surprised to see the Maker in his presence. In an instant, he understood the whole thing. He was connected to this new Maker, even though he didn't even know where it had come from. He felt it as a part of himself. Scared but excited, Sam decided to study and investigate all the information recovered from the ship and its new member. He was aware that he had acquired an amazing ability, a symbiosis between human and machine that took him to a new level of knowledge and power. From that moment, Sam's life changed radically. He dedicated himself to learning everything he could about the workings of the ancient chip and discovering the secrets that the mecha constructor offered him. His mind expanded with each new understanding and he felt stronger and more connected to the technology around him. The days passed and the moment of farewell arrived for Pandora. Sam understood that without her help, he would never have been able to gather so much material to continue his quest to understand Mechanita technology. Grateful but apparently indifferent to the departure, Sam plunged headlong into his research. While Pandora left, Sam completed the necessary research to build a few small stations to allow the mechs to recharge and gestate. The first of these was the recharging station, vital for the mechs to maintain their full operation. With the help of his new appendage, they embarked on building a specialized mech room, a nerve center for new technology. In this new room stood a recharging station, a table for creating mech brain chips and a gestation station. However, the demand for power exceeded the capacity of the existing generators. To temporarily solve the problem, he built another firewood generator to supply the missing energy. With everything up and running, Sam temporarily dropped basic tasks to focus on what he considered a major mission. His mind was completely focused on building the basic mecha subcore. Finally, after hours of painstaking work, the basic mecha subcore was completed. It was the heart of a new mecha, a creature of metal and technology yet to be born. With some suppressed excitement, Sam placed the first mech in the breeding station, eager to see the results of his efforts. The taming of a boomalope was unexpected, but welcome for Sam. The creature, with its bag of volatile chemicals on its back, seemed to have been domesticated for no one exactly knowing the reason. Perhaps, as Sam suspected, the newly grown potatoes had attracted the curious animal. Despite its fragile and weak appearance, the boomalope was a creature that commanded respect due to the explosion it caused when it died. Other animals had learned to stay away from him. While Sam busied himself with tidying up the area, his new appendage, which had been surprisingly adept at setting up a small pen for the boomalope, it was the perfect place to provide him with protection and care in his new home. With patience and skill, he managed to bring the boomalope to the corral. The creature quickly adapted to its environment and Sam discovered that it could be milked to produce chemical fuel. The planet gave him a break the following weeks, allowing him to gestate more mechs and build a small covered area for the boomalope to sleep comfortably. Sam's ability to build mechs was getting more and more impressive. He had gestated mechs specialized in specific tasks, one to order and transport cargo, another to clean the place, and a farmer robot that would free him from many manual tasks, allowing him to fully dedicate himself to his research. With his new mechanical help, the base began to function in a more efficient and organized manner. However, the encounter with an annoying neighbor who did not come to ask him for a little salt led him to take additional precautions. Faced with the possibility of facing dangerous situations, Sam decided to create a defensive mecha to protect himself. Security became a priority, and the new mecha soldier would be ready to act in the event of any threat. Before seeing the first mecha soldier born, Sam received an unexpected message from Pandora. In the message, she thanked him for his help in the form of a gift, sending him two new advanced components that graced the shelf. Although they were not of immediate use at the time, Sam knew that in the future they could be of great importance. In addition, another problem was appeased. The recharging of mechs and the gestation of new mechanical beings produced chemicals that were harmful to their health. The plastic bags that he used to store the chemicals were breaking when exposed to the outside. Concerned about the toxicity, Sam made up his mind and built a freezer in which he would store the bags and chemicals. In this way, he could keep them in optimal and safe conditions during their expected short stay in that remote place. The new soldier robot was not long in taking action in the face of the threat of attack from the north. A pigskin, 
a hybrid creature between a man and a pig, was coming dangerously close. These beings were known for their stamina, despite their clumsy movements due to their hooved hands. This particular pigskin belonged to the feared Polymopmoink tribe and was armed with a revolver and bulletproof protection. Although Sam was asleep, his consciousness was awakened through the robots, so he jumps out of bed instantly. As the enemy closed in, he led the mechs into the mess hall, hoping to keep them safe while he woke up the militer, the soldier. The intruder, agile and stealthy, quickly closed in and fired at one of Sam's mechs, but the shot only missed, allowing the intrepid mech to take cover to safety. Wasting no time, Kierwin moved to the next cover and began firing, while Sam and Spike repositioned to counter the assault. The deafening sound of bullets filled the area as Sam finally positioned himself properly. Taking advantage of a moment opportunity, Spike shot first, wounding the intruder, and then Sam hit an arrow that caused a cut on Kierwin's right leg. However, the bulletproof vest absorbed Spike's next shots, allowing him to stay in the fight. In a frantic exchange of bullets, Kierwin landed a shot at Spike, but the robot responded with a counter-attack, catching the intruder's arm. Despite the damage dealt, Kierwin continued to fire accurately, and in a tragic turn of events, he managed to hit Spike three times in a row, causing him to go offline. Pain and anguish washed over Sam, far more painful than the shot in the leg that followed. The fighting raged for hours in the dead of night, lit only by the flashes of gunfire. The sun was beginning to peak over the horizon, and the daylight gave Sam an advantage in aiming. The improved accuracy allowed him to repeatedly hit Kierwin, a tough opponent who resisted hits like a true pigskin. Finally, the intruder fell to the ground, nearly unconscious, after receiving a total of 19 accurate hits. Sam cautiously approached to check that the threat had been neutralized. Quickly, he stripped Kierwin of his protective vests and ran to his room to attend to his leg wound. While Sam was treated, Kierwin succumbed to his injuries, breathing his last gasps. The next day, Sam, still convalescing from injuries sustained in his encounter with the intruder, opened the gestator, freeing another mecha soldier he had in reserve and outfitted himself with the better quality vest, revolver and pants. He also retrieved an undercoat he found in storage, making sure he was prepared for any eventuality. However, that same night, something tormented Sam and prevented him from resting. The loss of the first mecha had caused a deep trauma, and he felt as if he had a phantom limb. Without hesitation, he went to the warehouse to pick up his loyal companion Spike and placed him in the gestator with the goal of reviving him once more. The days that followed passed in relative calm and the sense of loss gradually subsided. Sam began to understand that on this strange planet, survival required more than combat skills and physical stamina. He needed to learn and adapt to the circumstances in order to have a real chance of returning home. While Sam relentlessly investigated, the group also focused on dismantling abandoned structures to salvage useful materials, especially steel, that would be critical to their survival and progress. In addition, they disassembled the nearby mecha ship in search of valuable parts and resources. Then, one day, a great achievement happened. Sam managed to develop a technology that allowed to take advantage of geothermal energy. Near the base, to the south and east, were two geysers, and thanks to his ingenuity, he was able to convert this natural energy into electricity for the base. This advancement provided a much more abundant and efficient supply of power than the wood generators they used previously. The feeling of accomplishment and empowerment filled Sam. From being naked and desperate to survive, he now possessed unimaginable power. Although his longing to return to his old life and return to the stars was still latent, he realized that he still had much to discover in this unknown world. He decided to celebrate this breakthrough solo, throwing a small party for himself. He knew that there were future challenges ahead, but he felt more hopeful and prepared than ever. Sam understood that Mechanita technology held fascinating secrets and was determined to explore them to the end before leaving the planet. Thanks for watching the chapter. See you in the next one. Bye.